Hi, everybody. I'm sorry I'm a little late uh, to the meeting I was supposed to start. Um, I will say that the reason I'm late is, uh, is good for everybody. It was a really exciting, important company that uh, wanted a brief on, on, on baseline and uh, whether and how they can get involved and sponsor and all that. So uh, it was time well spent. How is everybody today? It's cold. Doing great. Right it's cold, did you say? In California? Yeah, it got I, down thought, the, I thought all those fires would keep you warm. No, I got down in the 40s last night. Just the sun hasn't come up yet. So it's just yeah. starting. Oh my. All right. Well, we are being recorded. If, if anybody uh, has a concern about that, um, uh, drop off now, of course. Um, uh, we, I'm, I'm just pulling up the agenda now. Fortunately, I had it up before. There it is. We got a lot to cover today. Um, and of course, Let's start right off by another round of congratulations to everybody that uh, pulled off such a wonderful summit uh, uh, the week before last. Um, golf clap to everyone. Um, well done. It was epic, right? Any anybody want to throw shade on that? I, I thought it was. I thought it was a new. I think it's we've we've invented a new genre. To be honest, um, does food anybody want to? Have, huh? The food was terrible. The food was terrible. <laughs> company was good though yeah the company was great um I, I think one of the the notable things was um and we'll talk about this in a minute uh you know the one of the least well attended um tracks probably got the most done um in terms of raw work out uh, and they, they got attendance but they they were on for practically the entire time uh, 30 hours with some time for sleep and uh, they got a ton of work done. We're going to talk about that today. Uh, but yeah, for a, for an event that actively discouraged people from coming and didn't, uh, unless they were going to come to work um, uh, in a, you know, massive volunteer Amish barn raising, um, you know, we uh, getting 453 registrants and 160 people online at any at the, you know, as many as that many uh, at any given time, over 30 hours across eight tracks of work. Uh, boy, I was worried and I'm so glad it went off as well as it did. So um, I think that enough said. Any, uh, any final comments on uh, the summit before we go move on? Okay. Um, Hackathon. 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 Yes. So um, here's where we're, what we're going through today. We're going to go through uh, uh, results and in insights from the Baseline Summit, you know, as I discussed just now. Uh, Bill Gleim is going to uh, report on um, some zero knowledge technique uh, findings that they've discovered uh, and, and developed. And we're going to go through the Gitcoin hackathon. Uh, we are also going to do our, our standard things. So Sam Stokes, do the maintainers have anything to report or discuss for the TSC? Um, one thing is, uh, Kale Teeter from Microsoft has expressed interest in joining the maintainers team. So we went ahead and, uh, he joined one of our meetings and, and discussed his view of the project and his in particular, uh, work around identity, the global phone book. So we went ahead and opened up the voting to add him to the team, but we do have the, the way our maintainers documentation is currently written is, um, a new maintainer has to open a PR and make some sort of code commit. So I reached out to Kale and I think he's working on, on something right now. So um, hopefully we'll see that pop up soon. And once that gets merged, we can officially add him to the team. Very well. Um, I will resist the temptation to, uh, to comment. Um, obviously uh, there's a lot of love for uh, Kale in the community, um, but uh, that's for the maintainers to get through. So good luck on that. Um, how are, how is it going with uh, additional efforts to uh, recruit more maintainers and contributors? Um, I don't have any other specifics to add. Um, I know there's some other I I can kind of do some some reaching out to other people that've been involved in the project, but I don't have any ongoing conversations about other potential maintainers. May I rec uh, suggest Nick? Um, you have the list of of uh, people that attended. 
And if you could perhaps work with Sam, uh, it, that's a list that has GDPR all over, or not GDPR, but uh, it's private information on, all over it. So we have to, you know, we have to manage it carefully. But we do have rights to um, to uh, to do follow up uh, with these people. So can can you guys work together to uh, specifically make sure that people that attended that can uh, that that have the out uh, that that we think would um, be candidates for contributing things um, that they get catalyzed to do so. I mean, that, I don't know about you guys, but it, it, there's a little bit of catalyzing required to get to actually do a pull request. Right. So there, I think there was a ton of work, a lot of excitement. And the big thing that we want to do now is not lose that to heat dissipation. Right. We want to uh, laser that into actual pull requests and work. And I don't, most people as time goes on can, not get habituated to doing that in this case. So, so let's get them activated if we can, if you guys could work together on that, would be great. Any other things from the maintainers? I see Brian on, I see other maintainers here. Nope, nothing else. Okay. Um, all right. I have, uh, uh, in the, in the, uh, and I will put the link to this in the chat. Um, here's the uh, here's the roadmap, and um, you'll see in there that uh, uh, unfortunately Anais cannot uh, um, uh, be here today. She just uh, pinged me early this morning and said that uh, she had something come up. So I'll report in. Uh, we've determined that the uh, the structure and content of the core and API specs and uh, have begun to start writing. That's the um, imperative right now for the standards team, which meets every second Thursday. And they met last Thursday. Um, the standards and specs working group approved the decision to prioritize the API spec. And we are parking core for now because it's relatively stable. Um, I added that uh, last line as, uh, as uh, my own commentary. She did not write that. Um, the two activities that we will focus on are writing up core concepts and definitions for final review and approval and uh, architecture and processes, she, she writes, in, including diagrams to be included in spec document for final review and approval. Um, I'll add that, uh, that you will not see right now on the public website docs page pages, uh, uh, docs.baseline-protocol.org, you won't see uh, the current specification work. Uh, and there's reason for that. Uh, th that will get lit up and put on the on the public site when we have a draft. So we're going through the OASIS process, and um, only folks who are have signed an ICLA, so basically somebody that's done a pull request or otherwise signed an ICLA with OASIS, can be, participate in those meetings. It's the one meeting that we restrict access to, and the one set of content that we restrict access to writing. Um, you, anyone can do it, but they have to write the, yeah, they have to sign the ICLA. Man, that's uh, pretty standard for standards bodies. <laughs> See what I did there? Same thing. Uh, stand, um, so, uh, if you're, in, if anyone is interested in that, please tell your organizations, uh, the big companies, especially make sure that, uh, your developers, architects, and engineers and folks are, uh, empowered, uh, and that they are made safe and they know that they're allowed to contribute and then actively encourage them to contribute to that work and they can get in on there. Any other comments from uh, folks that are, uh, I know Andreas, you, you're actively participating in that. I know Daniel was there as well. Um, any other comments from the, from the specs team? Plenty of stuff to do, not enough time to do it. Right on. Well, we got a, a volunteer army of 800, now over 800 people um, that are active, uh, according to my numbers. Uh, it was 600 not that long ago. So it's going in the right direction. Um, is, is it true that with op open source, all um, uh, enough eyes, uh, all bugs are trivial and all work is also trivial? I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah, okay, so that's, that's um, okay, so we'll close that matter. Uh, you can find the link to the previous steering committee in the uh, current agenda. And uh, 
you know, uh, I'll say that we, you know, minute preparation actually, um, uh, I'll, I'll put this to the TSC that we, we, we could use somebody to do minutes um, and all the other things that I'm doing, uh, adding, uh, going back and reviewing the hour long tape of the previous meeting for minutes is not something that uh, I am now consistently doing. Um, so if we, if we want to uh, improve on the practice of, of uh, generating minutes for this meeting, which is not in the bylaws, we don't have to, we do have the record on video. But if we want to improve that, um, I could use some help there. John, can I just uh, jump in on that one specifically? Because um, there's a couple of services that I use for transcribing video content into um, written. Um, there's otter.ai, which kind of does machine learning for it, and then also rev.com. Um, there, there is like rev.com is a little bit more expensive, but you tend to get a human doing it, whereas Otter is fully AI. And you still need to go through it afterwards, but it's certainly something that kind of simplifies the workflow a lot, though, for at least getting it written down. And, yeah, you know, you need someone to review it again, but it's like at least it gets a lot of the key information transcribed. That's a good idea. Oh, we'll, we will look into that. I've used Otter uh, quite a lot. Um, and, and also there is a way of uh, getting uh, these these meetings transcribed through uh, through YouTube, but uh, proper minutes are um, more succinct and usually things like you know uh, X Y Z topic uh, a, a discussion ensued, yada yada, um, and then we approve them. And we haven't been doing that in the last few times. As I said, that is not in the bylaw. It's not in the charter that we must. But if we want to improve that, we should uh, look to getting somebody to focus on. I was just going to say, for, for from the with like the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, for instance, and some some of the other um, groups, well, they they tended to have someone dedicated, but that person was very good at typing, um, and so it's it's that whole thing of yeah, of course, finding someone there, which um, may maybe a challenge without spending you know a little bit on it anyway to get someone doing it. Is this talking about transcribing Zoom meetings specifically, or? Uh, no, taking minutes of uh, a proper governance meeting. Oh, because Zoom has an auto transcribe feature. So whoever gets that task, like, can actually use that for free if you haven't used it. Right on. Yeah. So I'll, I'll put, I'll leave that to simmer for another two weeks and we'll take it back up next time. Um, see if somebody steps up and uh, to that. I will say that's one of the things that EEA did extraordinarily well is, uh, you know, they, they always had the support. For that so you know different organizations are good at different things EEA was always there with uh, minute taking um, right so um, moving on to Bill Bill Glein you're up hi guys um, so I've been um, so this is Bill Glein I'm chief technology officer of consensus health a spin out of a venture that began within consensus AG um, I've been working with Socrates for a while before the baseline protocol initiative began. And so I was very aware that when Socrates was the core of it, that if I went to the Socrates GitHub page, I would see hand wavy notices that this is not production ready code, do not use this for production code. So for building an enterprise to enterprise messaging bus on uh, something that's hand wavy about pr product not being production ready, um, figured we likely need some metrics and some quantifiers and some ability to set different levels of what we would consider production ready or not. And uh, in addition, you we can think about Socrates as just being one language to plug in and out of the framework. So we wanted to compare it against other ZK proof generating uh, code bases. And I want to hand over some very good work that's happened within Consensus Health. Uh, hand this over to Dr. Pastor Pombach in uh, UK to go over some of his findings and our team's findings. Hey guys, let me just share my screen. Oh, uh, here, oh, sorry about that. I think you might need me to make you a co-host. Oh, no, you're good. Are you good? Yep. Yeah, perfect. Um, so I just wanted to say that's uh, also mostly the work of uh, Hadas Talberger that I guess uh, some of you might know from uh, the Baseline community and our uh, engagement with consensus and, and and her work on the on zk proofs in general for a while so she it's still an ongoing collaboration that we that we're doing together on this thing okay so as bill was saying we we 
with this project, we tried to get a better understanding of uh, what uh, actual performances might uh, some of the main uh, ZK libraries available right now could, could deliver, uh, depending on like the workloads we were putting them through. And uh, one thing to understand is that we were very interested in uh, workloads that, that could be related to machine learning, because that's one of the things we're working on that uh, contents itself. So yeah, most, most of the work we'll see there is, uh, goes in this direction. OK, so the purpose of that tool uh, that we call ZKP Benchmarker is, is really to make it a, a decision-making tool on what uh, ZK Snark library to use, depending on the underlying context and, and what you're trying to do with your use case. And um, initially, we, we, we also wanted to make it available. Uh, so it's, it's going to be open sourced uh, pretty soon, I think. Um, because we wanted to make it uh, to contribute it back to the to the baseline community as well to to help uh, assist the design design of circuits that that would be helpful uh, for for baseline itself. What what this is is a it's a small framework uh, that tries to put the anchor on uh, on providing you with reproducible results uh, when running benchmarks on on zk start libraries. So it slices um, the various components, the various stages of a, of a ZK pipeline into, and expresses them uh, in, a, in a YAML configuration file so that you, at, at any time you know what, uh, what stage you are measuring and what, what you are actually benchmarking against. And to make that even simpler, uh, all, the, all, all the experiments that you're running within the framework uh, run within uh, a Docker container. So basically to, to integrate and, and test your workloads uh, with ZKP Benchmarker, all you need to do is to, is to package the framework that you're using uh, using Docker. And, and we've done that for, for two of them already. And, uh, and then described uh, the, 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 the experiments that you want to run uh, as a set of, uh, of YAML uh, common lines the same way you would do from your from your shell when you're when you're designing your your experiments, basically. So very simple to integrate with. And uh, yeah, as I said, the idea is to kind of like go in the direction of uh, of what the zk community is also building and uh, making more and more benchmarks available for a, a various number of, uh, of of underlying circuits. Um, so just. A, a bit of a refresher because uh, I'm not too sure who's uh, who's familiar with what. Um, the main the main notion to, to to just grasp here is that when you are dealing with uh, zk proofs uh, and, and zk proof frameworks, they, they are usually split into into two uh, two major stages. Uh, one is the front end, which is pretty much a compiler, and and what this compiler does is that it takes a high level representation. Uh, I don't know if you do you see my, yeah, you probably see my pointer. Um, this high level representation can be something uh, like Socrates that uh, I assume you are familiar with. Uh, that looks like that. So pretty much a, a loose syntax uh, with uh, some form of types like fields and return types. And, and that looks pretty much like Python. And something now more structured and, and actually uh, close to, to an actual program, which is uh, provided by Paypoint, for example. Uh, and that, that actually looks like a C program because it is a C program. So it's another, uh, another compiler uh, that, of course, looks a little bit more verbose and, and, and involves like manipulating pointers and all these things. But that, as we will see, will have um, a different kind of output than, than Docker has. And what these compilers do is that they they turn this high-level uh, program uh, into, into a set of constraints of uh, R1TS constraints in our case that, uh, that is then provided as input to the backend. The backend being um, the part of the ZK framework that turned these constraints into, into an actual proof. So that's, that's what's doing the heavy lifting of generating the proof, verifying the proof, depending on, on what you're calling. But, as soon as you reach that land of, of the back end, uh, you, you are ingesting R1CS constraints. So 
what uh, what is what is very interesting with that is that you could you could imagine, and we'll see that later, uh, different frameworks using uh, using the same backend, and that's what we've been doing uh, in the um, in the in the experiment to make sure that we had some more consistent results. So Zocrates is able to interface with uh, Lipsnark and Bellman. However, Pequin uh, interfaces only with Lipsnark. And um, what, uh, what, what, what we did to, to make sure that these, these were fair in terms of comparison is that we focused on the, the Lipsnark backend. So of course, some, some of the frameworks might optimize for one or the other. So we could, we could argue that it's, it's not only fair, but at least we know that we are comparing apples to apples uh, in, in that case. And um, just to give you a little bit more background on that, mostly what changes is uh, depending on the proving scheme that you're using, uh, one might or might not be available uh, in, in different backends. So for example, Zocrasis is using uh, Bellman to, to implement the growth 16 back uh, proving scheme, whereas it's relying on Lipsnark for, for two other proving schemes, like the Pinocchio proving scheme and, uh, and the GM17 as well. Okay. I see, I see uh, at least one hand up. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, but I, I but, but no, 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 no. Um, uh, find, your, find your moment for um, pausing if you no, no, that's go all the way it's through that. So that's good. You, you can, no, you, I, I can take questions in the, all along. Uh, it's just that I was not monitoring the, 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 the hand. I, I actually don't see it. So. No, yeah. no, we're, we're all respectful of the fact that sometimes the best thing to do is get all the way through it. So uh, uh, yeah, your, your choice. Question, question, please, uh, Andreas. Yeah, so, so, so your, your, uh, um, thank you, Jonathan. This is, this is, this is awesome, awesome stuff. The, so, so you're really, you're really benchmarking the tool chain, not the actual, actual um, um, implementation or the performance of the, of the different, the different, uh, um, actually, the different type, type of circuits. Absolutely, we, we not like. We don't really care about how good is the backend, right? I mean, we're pretty aware that some some backends like Bellman and all these things might be much more efficient than uh, than Leapsnark, for example. But what we're interested in is how good is the front end at turning a circuit, a high level representation, into the input that will then just rely on how good the backend is. That's Got what it. We need to do. Thank you. All right, that was that was. I, I, I thought it was it was it was the entire um, end to end. Um, no, but that that makes that makes uh, that makes sense. Thank you. Cool, cool. Um, okay, so to give you a bit more uh, framing on that. Uh, well, uh, you have about four minutes before we probably have to move to another topic. Oh, well, but okay. keep going. So, <laughs> maybe 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 we can go to ten. Can, but, uh, can, can you talk to the, Can you talk to the target? Uh, for example, um, uh, like na Docker native uh, versus. Um, Versus like in, in the browser, for example. Okay, so that, that's not something we've done. Uh, we, we've mostly focused on the, on pure on pure Docker native. Uh, cool. So yeah, because because as you as you'll understand, like we, we focused on the on how good was the transformation step. So even even in a way, like if it was better in the browser or not, was not very interesting for us. Uh, what what we noticed in then some of our some of our use cases showed some limitations from Socrates, right? Uh, Zuckerberg yeah. was uh, taking a lot of time to process some circuits that didn't look so complex to us, and we were trying to understand why it was so. Yeah, that that and uh, uh, different different um, uh, target environment or different targets uh, I've seen perform vastly differently. Yeah, 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 ab absolutely, absolutely, and uh, and and why why it's important is that because there's some works I'm going in the zk community uh, called zk interface that basically allow you to, to completely swap out um, these outputs. So if, if, the, if the frameworks that you're using can output this common uh, language in the middle, this ZK interface, it means that you, you completely don't care about what, uh, what backend you're using as long as the backend can ingest that. So it's really about how good is your front end at generating this intermediate representation. And that's what we were trying to, to get down to. So I'm just gonna skip quickly through uh, what we've been doing, but basically, uh, yeah, comparing this R1TS uh, constraint number mostly. Uh, yeah, make sure, make sure, by the way, to put punchline uh, where where you want the community to, you know, what, what do you want the, the community to do with mm -hmm. this? Uh, make sure to, to kind of let, let us know what the I'll, what the action is. I'll, I'll leave that on the on the last slide. I'll, I'll leave it on if you, if you want at the end. 
um, just two machine learning use cases, uh, matrix multiplication and the clustering use case, uh, very simple stuff. Uh, so what I'll do is that I'll probably skip through the graphs because they'd be quite hard to read and uh, they'll be more easy to, to, to read along with the description in the, in the paper that we'll, that we'll make available uh, pretty soon, hopefully. And I'll go straight to, yeah, the, the takeaway. Uh, main takeaway that we noticed with that is that Socrates was more efficient for smaller circuits, okay? While the Pequin compiler takes longer sometimes to compile, but is actually extremely good at uh, optimizing the number of constraints that are generated from complex circuits. What that means is that if you, if, if, if you happen to have a circuit that you think uh, is a bit slow when it generates the proofs, uh, for example, and that you're using Socrates, you might want to have a look at something like Pequin to potentially generate a more optimized uh, version of your constraint system. Because basically that the, the performances of the proof generation step, which is critical uh, in, in the browser, as you were, as you were asking before, uh, is extremely, is, is highly relying on the, on the number of constraints that are generated. So the better your compiler is at, at optimizing this number of constraints, the quicker you will be at generating proofs. And, and yeah, basically our takeaway is that in, in many cases, you'll see that the optimization that are made by Socrates in compiling are, are pretty naive in a way, and that Pequin uh, takes more time to generate them, but, but yields a much more efficient version of your, of your constraint system. And uh, yeah, with that, I would like to, I would like to invite you to, to have a look at the, at the paper and the code base as soon as we make them available. And uh, if, you want to, if you want to utilize it, and especially for or baseline circuit, that would be amazing. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely welcome some, uh, some contributions to the, to the code base, adding more circuits, improving the benchmarks, adding all the frameworks as well would be, would be tremendous. And uh, yeah, I think, I, I hope that was kind of helpful and, uh, and that you got something out of it. This was great. Um, are there any other questions from folks? One one quick one only. Uh, do, is is that is uh, did you? What about the dependency on the trusted setup on the on on the on the polynomial representation of that? I mean, because you're 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 baked into that at that moment. Is that is, have you looked at that varying yeah, that and seeing so what that what 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 that does to the performance? Because that's kind of important. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So we've not looked into it from a security point of view. Uh, we've more looked into, you, you kind of like get the same, uh, the same kind of considerations as in based on, on the circuit that you've generate, based on the, on the, on the constraints that you've generated, it's going to be more or less difficult to, to go through the traces setup. And what we've noticed sometimes is that Zocrates was sometimes struggling to compile a circuit, even like going through it, because it can, it can need like hundreds of gigabytes of, of memory just to compile a circuit and then require even more to go for a trusted setup, which makes it completely unsuitable for- This, this is true. I, I just had to approve a requisition for machines for a couple of our folks on those on that basis. They're like, I'm yeah. like why do you need this much RAM? No, yeah, <laughs> they're like, uh, we need it. Yeah, got it. That's something yeah, that's like- <laughs> is much more efficient in this direction uh, from, from what we've seen. Yeah, I, and, and, and at that moment, it's like really a question of, of, of whether that is suitable because I can, I can run more, more modern, um, let's call them more modern, more recent uh, um, frameworks on a, on, a, on, a regular, on a regular laptop. Right, yeah. At, at, with more constraints and, and faster and less RAM required. So it's like, the question is, do you really wanna spend that much money, right? And, and, and um, utilizing something it's like do you need a framework a, a, a mainframe just because the code the language you're using is and, is 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 arcane and depending thing. on your use case you, you might not even be able to do so if you need to do oh yeah totally in, in on the smartphone for example it's just it's just impossible. oh yeah forget about it forget yeah, about yeah, it forget yeah it. so so i'll i'll uh, i'll cut there um just as a as a roll-up meeting for with a what we have a registry of 120 people that show up to this meeting and it's an hour every two weeks. We can't go into too much detail on any given thing, but it's, it, would it be fair to say that the work that here uh, warrants at least two things? One is a special session with the maintainers. Um, I, so I'm just I'm I'm going to put some provocations out here, and please uh, uh, two 
uh, a special a session with the uh, standards team. And actually, and, and then a third thing is, yeah, let's, as a function of those things, let's get you guys, um, if any of your team haven't already made a pull request and done that work, please do so. And then, um, well, yeah, let's get this on the board. Let's get this contribution in. As long as you are very cognizant of what you're doing, you're putting it into a public domain space. Um, if you decide that the, 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 the baseline protocol repo is the right place for that, awesome. If we think it needs to be in something else, that's awesome too. Um, and, and I'm curious, I'm always, I always think with this stuff, you know, especially when the math gets beyond what my, my current level of ab the ability to educate myself. Um, I always think of it like Legos, right. Or, or like tool, or like a tool bench. So I, okay, I need to, I need to build this car. I've got to put this door back on the car. What tool am I going to use? And so if we can articulate this sort of thing in, in that sense, right. To say, well, Hey, I'm a, I'm a big uh, system integrator and I have an offering for generating zero knowledge circuit libraries for workflows with big companies or little companies. Um, and I'm going to use this in this way to make that work easier on me. Right. If we can get down to that punchline, then we'll get a lot more utilization. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it like the phone book thing, which is which we'll talk about in a minute, um, which is about identity, but really is a very practical approach to identity that is very parochial to baselining or moving that forward. And I think there's some utility Kale Teeter can attest to with with regard to um, just saying, hey, look, let's let's just get real practical about we need, we need a, a, a yellow pages for baseline uh, companies. Um, uh, we can maybe perhaps the same thing here where the, the, the business of uh, zero knowledge uh, work is wide and deep, but parochially in the case of baselining, we need, yeah, we need something that uh, we need a toolkit for generating effectively control systems for correctness. And we should talk about your rack. It's like it's like you don't need to spend ten grand for two <laughs> on a couple of on on hardware, right? If you if you could do it more effectively, that also has direct implications for business for business models. If you want to to do sort of like circuits as a service, um, yeah. Right? So can we take those two actions? Um, and Andreas, I, I I suspect that you might want to help make sure that this all goes the right way. Uh, sure. And it sounds like it's near and dear to your heart. Um, uh, oh no! So, I just want to save you money. That's all. Indeed. Um, yeah. So, Bill, uh, any any other words? And and uh, and and thanks for that. Thanks for that uh, briefing. That was great. We should we should. Get yeah, I hope I hope a follow on perhaps in a follow on uh, focus session we can come up with more specific bounty bill items for you. Oh, oh yes, I'm glad you mentioned that. So that we'll we'll use that as the uh, as the pivot over to the next topic. Uh, but just before that, uh, Sam, could you take an um, an action to make sure that um, that the team here is uh, it, let's let's make sure that there's a maintainer uh, um, review of this uh, with a little deeper dive, and so that the so that the maintainers can, are equipped to uh, merge this to main when. Uh, when the time comes. Okay, so set up a meeting between the maintainers and, and Bill and Jonathan. Am I over my skis by suggesting that Bill and, and team? Sounds reasonable. Thanks. Guys. Yeah, let's do that. So why don't we start with maintainers and then quickly uh, uh, the, the, the next step would be the uh, standards team. Andreas, I'm sure you've got that in tow. Um, but let's do that after uh, the team uh, runs a pull request so that they have the ability to get into that meeting. Okay, uh, so switch uh, pivoting over to Hackathon. Bill brought it up. The whole thing with uh, with regard to the to the summit and Nick, I, I I didn't give you some time that I promised you to to review the summit. So if there's anything else to be said there, um, sorry, I, I might have stolen your thunder earlier on. Uh, would it, you, you know, feel free at this point to bring that up? And then let's um, let's uh, let's talk about the output of that summit, which is uh, Hackathon bounties. Yeah, we're all about the bounties. 
Right. Uh, so any, any other things to review on the summit that, that, that the, the steering committee should know about? Uh, no, the, uh, an email from John went out through Jane and Eventbrite. So you should have seen that with links to the materials and things like that. Um, outside of that, it's, you know, we need the hackathon bounties, the projects. Right on. Um, I, my little, my new little MacBook, uh, uh, 13 inch is ripping through 70 hours of footage to get rid of all of that, the, the, the uh, dead air from the different tracks. Uh, you can find those tracks, of course, on, 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 the, uh, on the playlist, uh, Baseline Protocol Summit, uh, Baseline Summit 2020 uh, playlist. Uh, just go to the Baseline Protocol channel. You'll find all the, all the tracks. Um, but of course, we were, doing, we were rolling tape continuously on those, even when people weren't in those rooms. So I'm trying to rip those down. Just finished the education one. So two days of educational summit um, down to one video. And uh, it's taken about uh, three hours to render it. So um, uh, real long. Uh, so we'll upload that to, um, to YouTube and then we'll, we'll continue with the, the other eight as we go. That new M1 chip is crazy. Eight meg, eight gig machine that's doing that. Um, uh, dedicated, dedicated video GPU with lots of RAM is always, always a beautiful thing. Well, it's not a lot of RAM in this thing. It's just a system on a chip. They've changed the game. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, so, yeah. on on chip, not 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 separate separately, right? You're 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 on chip. You're not. You no longer have to go go next door to the to your to your to a separate chip. Right on. And by the way, this is my surreptitious uh, uh, plug to get Apple into the membership. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, right. So let's move on to the hackathon. Um, I think this is where we're, we have the greatest challenge right now. Is I don't know about you guys, but I was tired after that summit. I think everybody else was too. That was a lot of work. It was amazing. And we have it all in the can for everyone to see. Uh, the problem is, you know, how many humans, even at 2x speed, can walk through that much footage um, and find the, the meaty bits. Um, I, I like that it's on the record. Um, I, I like that it's transparent, but it, it, it is a lot of material. So it really does come down to those of us who were there in the rooms, making sure that we uh, don't lose too much time. It's already becoming too much time to get down the details that matter, the salient details. Um, so I urge you to write stuff down, even just on a, you know, a, a virtual scrap pad and just say, this is the, these are the things, these are the ideas. This is what mattered. This is what I observed. Please get that in here. Um, and, uh, if you want, just send it to me, I'll compile it all up, um, or, or put it on the Slack or what have you. There is a Git hub or a, there's a Gitcoin hackathon channel in the Slack. And I put out a call to action a week ago or a little under a week ago for us to put the issues in GitHub that wish to be bountied for the Gitcoin hackathon into that, you know, into that channel so that we could compile them up. And uh, I saw two things as a result of that. I saw a couple of several issues that really needed a lot more work and I didn't see a lot of issues. Uh, and I know they're there. So this is really the call to action. We put uh, to, to report, we, we met with Gitcoin. We pushed the Gitcoin hackathon out by a week to the 9th of December, which is a Wednesday so that we can also publicize it on the baseline show on Wednesday at noon, US Eastern. And uh, it will go for four weeks through the holidays and end on the 6th of January. And it will announce winners, well, I, I don't want to commit, but it, uh, let's say uh, we're, we'll run it, getting it the, the Wednesday after that. So it's uh, the, um, the uh, yeah, the, uh, oh, looking at December, yeah, 6th, the, the 13th, of course. Um, so that, that's, that's where we're at. That means that, and, and we are going to do this, we have 10 thousand dollars to allocate. So there's two things that everybody listening to this needs to know. One, if you really, really, really want to fund a, a bounty, 
on this hackathon or your company does, uh, you need to call me or contact me, ping me on, on Slack, you know, send me a carrier pigeon, something immediately. Um, we have enough money to make a fantastic hackathon as it is. But if your company wants to add some grist for the mill, um, nobody's going to say no. We just have to work on how to do it. So please make sure you do that right away. And there's a good reason to do it. If you know, because really what we, we've always said in the, in this community that we do this work for each other, but also to uh, we should draw a straight line to our business opportunities and, and our, our sense of success, you know, success, you should be able to draw a straight line to what you want to accomplish as your company and, your, and, and yourself. And so in order to, this is a great opportunity, example of where you can do that, because um, while we can talk about core, we can talk about standards. Um, this is the point where you, you can fund a hackathon item or make sure that we all collectively on that $10,000 fund a hackathon item that might stipulate working with your product or working with something you care about. Um, and you can be a judge and you'll be publicized as a judge. And that means you've got hackers, all, you know, ha the, the hackathon, the Gitcoin uh, community is large and this is being already well publicized. There's already a lot of people signed up to participate. And that means a bunch of talent working on what you want them to work on. So this is something definitely to spend a little time on this week. We have another week. So we, I was going to uh, have us look at all the issues today. Um, but to be honest, we just don't have them in a state that I would consider ready. Um, so we have, uh, until the 7th of, no of December, uh, and really we should, um, we'll, we'll probably have a special meeting of the TSC to decide on things on the week of the 30th, a week from now. So sometime during that week, we're going to have to really decide what those issues are. I'd say three to five, maybe on the outside eight. Um, issues. Anything beyond that, somebody would have to get real serious about funding themselves. Any questions? Uh, yeah, quick question, John. One of the issues we would have liked to see on the base use side is the uh, integration into the baseline uh, proof of concept that, that Sam was working on. Um, I'm not sure if you had a chance to take a look, but is there anything you'd like to see from that issue? Like we, we can definitely, you know, flesh it out some more if that's, that's uh, helpful, but um, yeah, I guess it'd be good to get some specific feedback about like what you'd like to see from an issue and, and what's the level of, of detail you want it fleshed out to. Right on. Um, I'm, I'm, while you're speaking, I'm, I'm going to go over to um, the hackathon um, channel where I pasted exactly the format that Gitcoin uh, recommends, which is a little different than our normal issue or Epic format. Uh, it's kind of simpler. Um, they, and they also have a lot, if you go up the up on that channel, which is Gitcoin hyphen hackathon hyphen 2020 in the Slack. Um, so let me go pull down to where that is. And there it is, template. So I'll share screen. Um, yeah, so you're, uh, don't worry about the prizes thing. Basically, it's the prize title should be catchy. Prize bounty. Because you, you're, you're trying, we're trying to get people to actually pay attention to it. There's a lot of things that they could be working on. They're doing real work. Um, you know, so the, the bounty and the TSC will determine in loose consensus how much we put on each bounty and how and what bounties we select. Um, and then, yeah, list of the token type will be ETH. So this, they will be paid out in ETH from a, um, a MetaMask account. Um, the challenge or from a wallet uh, challenge description. Um, be as descriptive as possible about what you want to see built. Challenges should be useful for your organization, but open-ended enough for, to allow for creativity from hackers. And that then comes down to requirements, of course. So judging criteria and tests. So um, this is where I would link up with what we'd normally do, which is, uh, you know, what, what are the acceptance criteria? 
of the, uh, and this, this is really where I would spend the most amount of time is, is making sure that the acceptance criteria is clear because you know, most good developers, that's what they're, that's what they're paying attention to. Um, judging criteria, of course, and the same. Yeah. So roughly, I think these two pieces are, are key and the winter announcement date will be, as I said, the 13th of January. And these should go into, um, let me know if you don't see this. I'm not sure I. Yeah, we can see your screen. Okay. The whole screen. Okay. Yep. So I just bringing this up. You'll notice that there are, and this will pivot us into the final piece of today, which is talking about a couple of existing issues. Um, you'll see that we have the November summit here and the epics that were, that were uh, effectively uh, towards the tracks that we did. And you'll notice that like some of these oracles and you know, external events integration, there's already um, this one that we had that we're gonna use, and, but it does need some work. So um, work with me and, I'll, and, and we'll make sure to get the issue into this column, Hackathon December, 2020. And right now you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, and I wouldn't say all of these are really uh, ready for prime time, but you'll see here, you've got that Hyperledger Basu one, right? And thanks Connor for uh, submitting that. Um, you have one around baseline JVM, I'm not sure about yet. Um, and uh, you know, so here, here, are all the, here, here are the issues that have been currently um, put in. I think we can do a lot better. Um, I'm, I'll put my effort in this week, uh, but I think uh, if there was anything that if you guys were, if anybody here or anybody that's going to be listening in later, uh, you know, this, this is the, the, the week, this week should be implemented, you know, should be really all about making sure we have great issues. Uh, it's, a, you know, it's a pretty notable amount of money, and this is a great opportunity to, uh, to move the ball forward on key issues. Any comments? Uh, hi, John. This is Alex. Uh, are, the, are the only issues the ones that we can see on your screen right now? These are the only ones that have been written, but if you want to write another one in the next 10 minutes, there'll be another one there. <laughs> <laughs> there was one that uh, Anais created and I endorsed and I sent it to you and I can't see it. The core interface is messaging in QT1. Next evolution okay. of core interfaces. There it is. Ah, okay. Is that is that a hackathon entry? I think so, but okay. This, yeah, messaging interoperability, um, baseline RPC, and zk protocols. Yeah. Product cookbook intake. Yeah. So I think we need to make these into um, something that's um, actionable as a, as a as a bounty. Right now. So uh, let's see, I, I don't think product cookbook intake is set up this way. Nope. Which one was the one? Uh, oh, I, I bet it's messaging interoperability. I mean, because that, that would be near and dear to your heart, right, Alex? Yeah. Yeah, so talking about the iMessaging service. Um, Kyle, why don't we use that to pivot over to your segment? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think the, the, the biggest thing, um, let me pull up the, uh, one second. Let me know if you want to share a screen. That's okay. What Kyle is, is looking, it's like one thing on messaging. Um, it's like if you if we if you agree on one one messaging framework, then you don't have to worry about interoperability. If you if you um, if you have different frameworks and you need uh, a user agents um, that that forward and and replicate the messages, and then you need something like Ditcom, and then then it and then it gets really really messy. I don't know whether that that is is at this point in time sort of like a a a a major major focus. Um, you know, um, for for I think it's it would be easier initially to agree on hey let's all use this one framework um, in order to to be interoperable and, and forward messages. 
and then phase two is okay and that people can decide between kafka and whatever revit mq or something like that um just well, well kyle is pulling this up but uh, why, yeah, why don't we also then yeah is this uh andreas is this yours the one um is this 156 is that yours yes. uh yeah that's mine right so this one too. So this one kind of goes you know, to the other side of it, right? Almost too much detail. So we're going to want to summarize to, you know, why. Uh, can... No, that that's the scaling requirement. Sorry, it's one fifty five. Sorry. Okay. That that's yeah. that's a that's that's sort of like the output. You want you want one fifty five. That's the that's the hackathon thing. All right. So you, do you want to briefly go through this? And we'll come back to Kyle. Uh, yes, I can. I can. I can very very briefly go go through through that so the the um the um the business problem to solve is really how can we get the um uh, tr uh cost per transactions down to below significantly below one penny um which is currently at you know um well, five dollars two to three five dollars um and that is obviously um, predicated on the assumption that um, baseline will be used at scale and not for you know transactions of value of like 10 million and above in which case you don't really care whether you're paying 200 or 300 or two dollars for a transaction um so that so the business motivation the assumption here is yes it will be used at scale and at that point in time if you uh, have a p if you have a thousand dollar po on a CentOS janitorial service you don't want to pay two dollars for that extra on top of anything Right, so it's like if you you know if it's less than a penny, you don't care. So um, uh, that means uh, we need to figure out how we um, roll up, uh, batch up uh, many many uh, baseline transactions, different ones from different workflows with different um, uh, uh, work from different work groups um, into into one on-chain transaction. So you pay, you know. 50 bucks or 100 bucks or 200 bucks for one but you're spreading that across you know 4000 5000 10000 20000 transactions so and that's what this is this uh, challenge is all about it's very specific there's sort of like a base goal and a stretch goal the base goal is you know sustained um anchoring um at of, of a, uh, at the order of of about uh what is it 100 transactions a second for like 10 minutes and being able to anchor that um, on chain. Um, right. stretch so this one, this this one, I would say is 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 as close to of all the ones that I've looked at. This is the one that's closest to something the TSC could, you know, either go yes, no, or a little more information or or refinement. So I think it's it's kind of ready to be or getting close to being ready to be considered. I think I'm gonna um, hold some some workshops and sessions, uh, brainstorming sessions this week. Um, if anyone is interested in participating in those to get their issue into really good shape or to create an issue, um, please yeah. reach out to me and we'll do that. So, so I, think we wanted to have, I think we wanted to have three, between three and, and five or three and eight, which one, which was it? Three, three and five for the 10K. Yeah. Three and five, yeah. So between this one, yeah, yeah. So between this one, which I, I certainly think is, is it meets the criteria, and um, I think the the base one would be would, would be possibly a, a cool one. Um, and then fi finalizing, I think the workflow exiting uh, one between that one, and then I've got another one, uh, another idea around adding Microsoft Excel as a uh, to the as a uh, persistence package provider. Uh, between those sort of four ideas, I think we. Uh, can have at least at least those issues to consider uh, this week. Right, the phone um, book yeah. is that is that also also or or did, or not? Uh, I think that would be that would be really yeah. Phone book's in here. Yeah. Yeah. So phone book would would be would be really really yeah, yeah. worthwhile in order to actually, you know, get to the get to the meat of of actually how you implement that and make a, someone make make a suggestion for a sensible. Uh, um, a data model and B trust model that is that is um, you know that that is legally possible <laughs> and yeah. not wishful 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 thinking. Agreed. So so I would I would John I would say uh, issue uh, two fifty five and issue two sixty which I just created. Um, 
would be will be the issue. I'll fill those out with, with significantly more detail. Uh, and All right. Circle I'll move them tomorrow. I just moved to 60 over and 255. I have just moved over as well into the hackathon uh, thing. And yeah, go ahead and uh, all those those ideas, you know, just put them on the put them on the Slack uh, too so we can discuss them. Uh, yeah, well, I'll, um, I'll fill them out with detail and share again. So yeah, I will definitely call a meeting, um, is, uh, several meetings this week to brainstorm and uh, workshop these, uh, these issues. Any other questions? Uh, so anybody else who is uh, teed up to discuss, you're off the hook because we're out of time. But I think um, this, what I wanted to do there was give some, give folks uh, some things that were emblematic of uh, what we're looking for here. So we have a few more minutes uh, to discuss uh, any, any questions or uh, concerns or um, things to bring up about the hackathon. Okay, so um, yeah, and again, uh, for the recording, which I will put out as quickly as possible so people can use this, um, uh, make sure that uh, your companies and uh, organizations and uh, uh, talent is uh, activated to be involved with the hackathon. Anybody can contribute, anybody can, uh, can compete. There's real money on the line. Um, I don't think there's any company that I know of that has rules that say you can't win a hackathon and make some money. Um, and uh, of course, we want to write these in, I'll say two last things about this. One, they should be written in such a way that you, that we're uh, attracting new people, new contributors. So they should be written uh, for new but talented people. And, um, and we're probably going to have to set up some workshops for them to get around things like Andres, Andres in particular on your stuff because it's pretty dense. Uh, uh, Jimmy Lentz, I know you're probably jumping off right now, but uh, I know you've got a lot of talents uh, over at Duke, and I know we have a great student community. CMU was uh, at the at the event last week, so these these things are might might be interesting for them to compete in. Yeah, um, more than happy to, uh, to to help out there, John. Uh, I was going to send you a private note when you uh, when you want to discuss that. Let me know. Right on. And the last thing I'll say is that there are th really three types of um, of of, pro of of really reasonable projects. One is something in the core, something that's you know, pretty deep. Uh, there's nothing wrong with those uh, that would add to the, co the core. Uh, something that is um, more of an implementation on a particular stack where you're featuring that stack. Um, and uh, one is an actual demo of some kind of application using, using the baseline protocol uh, to do its job. Uh, and we saw that a little bit in one of them, which was, uh, that had to do, you know, it was a, it was about L2, but it had to do with tokenization of invoices so that you kind of are getting two things in one there. Thanks, Andreas. And I, we are at the top of the hour. So um, anyone ha has the last word, uh, otherwise we'll, we'll call it a day. Thanks everybody, cheers.